So good morning and welcome to Monkhouse on Mondays. Today I'm delighted to be joined by Paul, who's um, Director of Alliance and heads up the TA6 brand. So good morning, Paul. How are you this morning? I'm good. How are you, Dave? How's things? Yeah, really good. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm losing weight. I'm more physically active. I'm trying to get some sunshine when I'm allowed at the weekends. Um, what are you up to to sort of keep your physical activity going? I know you quite like golf, don't you? Yeah, sadly, I haven't been able to get out on the course, but I'm, I'm itching right. to, definitely. Um, Pre-lockdown, I was a bit of a free weight uh, yep. gym bunny, um, but not done much of that in lockdown. I've been running, um, okay. uh, trying to get uh, my times down below nine minutes per mile, which is a struggle. Very slow, but I'm running. So, uh, yeah. Good. Excellent. I, I, for some reason, the, yeah, lots of people in the industry sharing their runs. So that's been spurring me on to try and get quicker. So, yeah. Absolutely. I, I work in kilometres, so I think I'm down to a 5.12 per K for a 5K at the minute. Got no idea how that sits with miles. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm yeah. slow. I'm slow, but I'm getting out. Good. Well, it feels quicker when you do it in kilometres, though, instead of miles. So I quite like that. I'm going to change that then. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. OK, so, Paul, you know, you guys at TA6 and Alliance do some fabulous work and you get the pleasure, just like me, of being in lots of people's businesses and just seeing what they're doing, supporting them, helping them grow and things like that. So what sort of really good practice have you seen from your clients, from your operators, uh, you know, during lockdown? I think what we've looked at is there's been some key stages that we've been going through. So the first stage was the closure phase and how we communicated to to customers and dealt with that situation. And I think there's some some real positives and some real negatives in that journey. But I think where people communicated quickly, positively, got their brand out there um, and switched, pivoted to having an online solution really quickly yeah. made a difference. So, um, you know, we, an example of that is Warwick Sport, who we're working with, or Rubicon Leisure, where they, they really saw that you know, pre actually pressing the button to shut and were able to fire that off really quickly. Where a lot of people have, have missed that opportunity and still not quite got that right so um yeah that pivoting quickly was was really positive so, um, yeah and that's fascinating you, you refer to warwick sport which is what 18 months old now i think something like that yeah. Fab building how have they coped with with almost just about being established and then having to go i'm sorry we've shut our doors what's the what's it been like well, it's having that agility to adapt because we were about to just fire off their first year birthday campaign. We prepared right. everything ready for this big We Are One was the campaign, a big um, call to arms about the successes of all the member achievements, but encouraging people to be part of it. And then lockdown kicked in. Right. Um, so real challenge there. But the key was to keep that community and the We Are One engaged. So mm. um, they created a hub. This, and I think that's a phrase I've heard on some of these calls, this hub of information for right. customers to go to for online support to stay connected. Um, and that's really worked to keep people, you know, within the mix. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was yeah really disappointing for them in that context, but they were able to flip it really quickly. And that agility and that pivoting is, yeah. is essential. Um, so. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that, that whole agility thing is really interesting. But of course, We Are One would work really well in this context as well. You know, actually all in it together and that type of stuff. It's brilliant. Yeah, and that's going to be the transfer. Their campaign now is going to be, we're going to carry on with the Join the Movement that Sport England put on. We Are One, get yeah. involved. So um, so on their online workouts now, we're going to start getting people to Join the Movement t-shirt. So there's that transition to what we call the We Are Here phase, which we're in now, where you stay connected to your, your customers. And then how that then flows to relaunch. So if mm -hmm. you can subtly build up the positive messaging and momentum without being ignorant to how people are feeling during this, yeah. you know, anxious time, but mm -hmm. subtly dropping in the campaign, we are one, join the movement is really powerful. Um, and that's kind of the essence of, I think, what everyone should be doing with their campaigns. It's a bit of a call to arms, challenging people to bounce back at the right sure. time. Oh so, yeah. Okay. That's really Excellent. worth it. Yeah, I, I think that's it's fascinating. And that, that whole transition, as you said, from what right, we've got to close to right, what are we doing now in order, as you say, to communicate with our customers and things like that. So what are the sort of things do, do people need to be thinking about in this phase as we wait almost for the, the all clear to be allowed to open, whether that's July the 5th or 6th or whether it's a bit later? What's the things we should be doing? 
Number one, don't wait. Um, I think right. that's crucial. You should have your campaign ready now, your messaging in the flow. And there are three stages that there's the we are here concept. We're on standby and we're back. So your campaign right. needs to be ready for the, that flow. So if during July we're going to start to open in whatever way that looks like, your messaging over the next two or three weeks needs to start to talk about that, the standards you're putting in place, the, yeah. the you know, having thought through what restricted opening looks like. This, the industry has so many questions and it's yeah. what are the answers. And um, so you really need to be modeling different scenarios. And that then links into the big thing, which is the big unfreeze, I call it. How are people <laughs> going to start to unlock yeah. their memberships without you know, really damaging you know your club live you know um so yeah it's that build up plans now in those phases is crucial so, yeah okay you guys did a, a really interesting four thousand person response survey you use social media you ask people to put stuff out on their social media i know i filled out the survey myself what yeah. sort of did you generate from that that can can assist us in this this phase that we're in now i think the, the key thing there was some some gems that came out yeah it was a um, a 4,000 core group of people that generally are part of the leisure community. So, uh -huh. so there's a slight bias to the fact that they're involved within leisure, which um, and and the uh, to brands that were putting out the messaging. But that you know, 70% of people wanted to be more active afterwards, which I think right. is really, really powerful. A, a key bit though was the the dynamic of age. It showed that the younger demographic, 16 to 24, their activity levels had dropped during lockdown. Mm. Whereas as you progress through, people had got out and been more active. So I think inspiring that younger generation to to get back into the club and the experience side, I think is important. Um, also the the impact of online. 52% of the people that surveyed said that they'd want online and the club, you know, yeah. and facility together. Um, yeah. uh, so I think that that would that will be massively different to pre-lockdown. Um, yeah. So. The fact that the online offering is going to be part of the other side is key. Um, I don't think it's going to be as huge as everyone's thinking because of the fact that people don't have a choice at the moment. You know, yeah. it's either I, I get out for a walk or a run or I do online content. It's going to be a, a key part of the offering. But I think yeah. there will be a big chunk of people will be desperate for interaction, desperate for service, desperate for connection yeah. when it feels safe. So it is a part. It is part of the mix, and, it, and our survey showed that. I think people are desperate as well to get back in into yeah. the centre and connect with people. So uh, absolutely, that socialising side of stuff is coming out clear in a lot of surveys. I think one of the challenges at the moment is that there's a lot of great surveys out there. They're not necessarily talking to people who weren't users in the first place. Um, yeah, there's 12 million people out there who are in what are called digital poverty. You know, they, they, they don't have access to a device or they don't know how to use that device. So it, it's, you know, that digital thing is, I think, is really important. But actually, it's a, it's really important to those people who have got the ability, again, to take part in activities. So I think we need to do some work on non-users as well. Yeah, and I, I think there are three key words, I think, um, the general population. They're really going through these stages. They're reflecting on their lives through this mm -hmm. journey, really reflecting on my health, my job, my family, you know, um, uh, my kids' education, what I spend my money on, and then they're appreciating or not appreciating certain things and yeah. brand within their life. And a lot of people are making decisions now on what I'm going to do the other side of lockdown. And mm. I think being active and being healthier is on that list big time. Um, yep. But also what I spend my money on is as well. Mm. Um, so people, you know, your sleepers, that figure that we have in the industry, they really are questioning whether I should, when we unlock, the yep. member because there's other choices so um understanding that journey you know the whole revenge spending concept is fascinates me at the moment that as soon as the drive throughs open people are queuing for two hours for a burger mm. because they mm. can and they want to yeah. spend um mm. and is a health and fitness membership going to be on that revenge spending list we have to make it part of that and um mm. by inspiring people to want to get active um after this you know isolation and period they've been through so yeah absolutely and, and you've mentioned campaigns and you've talked about sport england's campaign is there have you seen any other stuff that you can point us to that starts thinking about how we can influence that revenge spending in the way that that hopefully sport england's campaign will because it'll get it'll get some big financial backing 
it would be my guess to be able to deliver that campaign in the way they want to do it. Definitely, yeah, and I think um, I think the the big sport England and the national campaigns uh, are inspirational and really encourage people, but they generally don't drive income or numbers. Okay. And I think what mm -hmm. operators need to do now is really align themselves with big national campaigns and connect with them rather than say, yeah, that's great. It's in, like this girl can is inspiring people to exercise yeah. or um, or National Fitness Day. But does it drive in this climate to survive? It needs to drive your units. So connecting with national campaigns and, mm -hmm. uh, and operators, if they're developing their own campaigns, are really aligned to that message or they buy into them. I think it's crucial. Um, we've developed a Make the Comeback campaign that we're, is, is a national campaign people can use that we've right. already probably eight or nine operators who are going to do that, yeah. encouraging people. To, but part of that is we really want to align with any national campaign and it's got that agility and flexibility. Mm. Um, we're inspiring people, but the operators are benefiting from people actually purchasing products and I think that's crucial. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, where in the past that's not happened so much. It's, it's linking into national campaigns is crucial. Definitely. Mm, no, I would agree. I think the first time this girl campaign came out, people just looked at it and went, oh, great, that'll drive some business into my my environment and and didn't change their programming, didn't change their marketing activity, That's the strategies that they use. So I'm, I'm hopeful that with the support that you guys can give and others are giving, that actually people will do as you just suggested. Definitely, definitely. And there are people like us need to be facilitators, you know, to make sure that the operators do buy in, you know, as a yeah. as a marketing provider or as a you know commercial support, maximizing that great messaging. Have you uh -huh. developed your offering to really link in is is crucial. And I, I think that will be a bit of a game changer the other side. Operators will need to do that definitely. Definitely. Yeah. And I think going back to a lot of what we're hearing in the surveys, I think there's also a real need to start understanding those age ranges that you talked about, the gender, and then making sure that our collateral reflects the type of people that we are trying to attract into the slots we're trying to attract and actually put some real intelligence into our collateral that we use to promote activity. Yeah, and I, and I think modelling that certain groups may not come back as quickly over the mm -hmm. next few months. So your campaign messaging needs to really think about who are your segments? How are they feeling, you know, about the whole yeah. COVID-19 situation, about their lives, their reflection and what they've appreciated? their fear potentially and adjust your messaging accordingly and I think and, and brands need to be really clear on who their segments are now you know not yeah. just play lip service to that before who am I trying to attract and is the messaging of my campaigns really resonating with them and um, and those the value of your standards and having things covered is crucial um, yeah. you know, my big concern David is that people are going to focus on acquisition way too quickly yes. it's your yeah. current customers first that you had encourage them to come back through and then build up from there and some mm. narrative that I'm seeing a lot of some consultants saying this is the biggest pre-sale in history mm. not at the moment it might it's about yeah. it um, it will yeah. be there's going to be a bun fight at one point but mm -hmm. initially no um, yeah. yeah no I, I would agree with that piece around pre-sale because one of my my concerns is if if we do pre-sale pre-sale tends to mean reducing the yield and you know, with 110% of the cost and then reduce your yield, I just don't think it's a model that really can sustain us and allow us to get back onto our feet. So I think you're right about that, that pre-sale piece. And the confidence, for me, it's all about confidence. We've got to get to that safe middle ground population that really wants to know we've done everything we can to keep them healthy while they get back into their exercise and fitness. Yeah, we're, we're doing a really, we're about to launch really exciting as well, which is a training module. Marina had a train development, myself have developed a module for the staff on restrictions, customer service COVID style. So all of those scenarios. So you're asking a leisure attendant now to be able to talk to people about the fact that they're not delivering standards or that they're not abiding by the rules. So that initial experience of you know, the staff and giving them the confidence to be able to deal with scenarios where people aren't following the rules because if people mm. don't that will spin for you because it will look like you haven't got it covered and um, so you can say all these great things but you then have yeah. to deliver it so yeah. Well, I think that's a really interesting point to close the conversation because our time has gone it's absolutely flown as I think I said it would um, <laughs> but what that has done is identified maybe another conversation with Marina to talk about what she's created from that learning and development so I'll get in contact with Marina as a result and we'll get this sorted. But for the time being, John, thank you so much for your time. That was really insightful. You okay. take care. Thank you. See you later. Bye now. Bye. Cheers, mate.